Yo, my dudes, it's another Friday, and you know what that means? AutoCAD for Noobs, episode 3. Woo, this one's gonna be a doozy. Let us proceed to the first part of today's adventure, which is plotting lot bearings or site coordinates. But before we begin, if you guys haven't yet watched part 1 and part 2 of AutoCAD for Noobs, I'll put the links to those videos in a comment below or in the descriptions. Now, this is one of the most important skills you must learn when taking up AutoCAD because one of the first steps before designing a house or making a floor plan is to create the lot bearings. For some of you who haven't seen what a lot plan looks like, it usually looks like something like this. But before it looks like that, it usually is just a bunch of confusing numbers and letters that kind of look like this table right here. So this is called the technical descriptions table. Now I know it all looks scary, but don't worry guys, I am here to guide you as to what these numbers are and how to properly plot them. So first, let me explain as fast as possible as to what these random numbers are. So this first column is the line points. Basically, this describes the two ends of a line that you will plot. So when you look at the lot plan, there are usually these numbers on the corners of the lot where the lines meet. So those numbers correspond to this line numbers on our table. For example, we have the line whose endpoints are 1 and 2. So that line is called line 1-2. So the next technical description is called the bearing. This is the angle of the line in relation to our cardinal directions. So take line 1-2 for example, it says S for south, 40 degrees 20 seconds W or west. What that means is that our line is going south at an angle of 40 degrees and 20 seconds westward or going to the left. Lastly, on our technical descriptions table, we have our distance column which is pretty self-explanatory. It is the length of our line or the distance from point 0.1 to point 0.2, point 0.3, point 0.4, point 0.5 and all those stuff. Alright, now that you guys know what these random numbers are on this technical descriptions table, let us now proceed to the actual plotting of the lot lines. So when you plot your lot coordinates, you will want to start with line 1-2 or the first row in our technical descriptions table. So first thing you gotta do is make a line. So type L, then click on your drawing sheet to place the first point of our line. Then type in the at symbol followed by the distance or the length of our line, which in our case is the distance of line 1-2 and that is 30,750 millimeters. Then immediately after that, type in the left angle bracket or the less than sign followed by our lot bearings. So we have to type in S40 and then we just type in D, which stands for degree. Then just type in 20 seconds or that semi quotation mark. So a quotation mark is two like that. A semi quotation mark is just one. Okay, after that semi quotation mark, just type in our last cardinal direction, which is W. So if you type it all correctly, your command line should look something like this, guys. Okay, so if your command line looks good, just press the space bar to activate our line command and bam, we now have line 1-2. Now all we have to do is make a circle at the end point of our line. So to make a circle, just type in C, then spacebar to activate our circle command. Then just click on the end of the line to place the center of our circle. Now all you have to do is to type in the radius of your circle. So for small lots, I usually just use 300 millimeters for my radius. So type in 300, then spacebar again to finalize our circle command. And Bozinga, you are now a level 8 AutoCADsman and have just learned how to use the circle spell and the lot bearing spell. Anyways, let us get back to our site plan. So now that we've got a circle on line point one, which is this point right here, we now have to label it. So to label it, we are going to use the text command. So just type in T, which is the shortcut for M text. Then press spacebar. Once your cursor turns into activated mode, just click on our drawing sheet just below our circle and this little box should appear. Now just make a box that is roughly larger than the circle we made. Then just click on the drawing area to finalize our text box. So if you did those steps correctly, a text line that looks like this should appear. Now we just type in our text, which in our case is one. Okay, the next step is to set the proper height of our text because the default text height for AutoCAD is super small for some reason. So to do that, we just have to look at the upper left corner of our AutoCAD window where we could see our font style tab. And then there should be a number just below the annotative toggle. So that is our text height in millimeters. So for this slot, we are just going to use a 450 millimeter text height. To change the height of our number one, we just highlight our text 
So highlight that. Then click on the text height box on the font style tab and change the number to 450 and press enter. Now our text box is going to become super giant. Don't worry, just click on our drawing space outside the text box and that should magically make everything non-giant again. And there you go, we now have our first line point and you guys just made your first text in AutoCAD. Now all you have to do is to copy our circle and our text to the other end point of our line. Then just change the text to number 2 to denote that this is the second lot point. So to edit the text, just double click on our number 1 and a text box should appear. So from here, you can now edit the text. And bam! We're done. Now for line 2-3, just repeat the first steps we did. So create a line and set our line starting point on our lot point number 2. Now we just have to type in at 28,440 which is the distance or length of our line 2-3. Then immediately follow that by the left angle bracket N 5 D. 20 semi quotation mark W and then to finalize just click on the spacebar and bingo bango bongo we now have line 2-3 so just do the same process with lines 3-4 4-5 and 5-1 and we should all be good. So once you're done, your lot should look something like this. And if you zoom closer towards lot point number 1, you will see a tiny gap and that's totally normal since the surveyor can perfectly provide absolutely accurate lot bearings. So all I do is I just drag this line so that it meets with lot point number 1 and Bob's your uncle. We now have a perfectly closed lot. Now just join all of our lines to tidy up our drawing and complete the rest of our lot points by adding the circles and the lot point labels. And with that, we are now on the final stretch of our lot plan adventure. So to make your lot plan look a little bit snazzy, just add a north symbol so you can just copy from the internet or you could just create your own like the one I made here. Or with 5 easy payments of $5,000, you could copy my north symbol right here. Okay, when you're done with the north symbol and then paying me the $5,000, all we have to do is to just label our lines properly. So when labeling our lines, all we have to do is copy our line bearings followed by the line length in meters. So instead of making another new M text, which is a super hassle, we can just copy one of our M text and just edit it. So let's copy our number one. So control C, control V, you know, the usual copy paste. So now just edit that text and copy the line bearings of line one dash two. So type in S 40, then the degree symbol. But Leon, I can't find the degree symbol in my keyboard. No worries me amigo. To create the degree symbol, just type in percent percent D and that will automatically create a degree symbol. Wow, magic. Anyways, back to typing. So S 40, Degree symbol, 20, semi quotation mark, W. There you go. Now we just type in our distance in meters, so 30.75 meters. And when that's done, just click outside our text box to finalize it. Now to make our lot plan look professional, you want your label to align with our line 1-2 or whatever line you are labeling. So to do so, we are just going to have to rotate the text. So to rotate, we just click on the object we want to rotate. For example, this text line, then press RO for rotate and spacebar to activate our command. Then when your cursor turns into the activated mode, click on the beginning of our text line or wherever you want the object to have its rotational axis. Now here comes the magic part. Type in our lot bearings as the angle of rotation. So for this one, we just type in left angle bracket S40 D20 semi quotation mark W and then just click on spacebar to activate and BAM! Our text is perfectly aligned to our line. So in case your text ends up upside down like mine, all you have to do is to rotate it again but make sure that our F8 or ortho mode is turned on. Okay, so we just have to activate ortho mode F8. Then click on the text and type RO. Then click on the center of our text to establish our rotation axis. And just move your mouse to rotate it around until it is right side up. And swizzle my fizzles, you guys just leveled up again. You are now a level 9. AutoCADs man my dudes. And with that amazing achievement, you guys are now well equipped to complete this whole quest by yourselves. And would you look at the time. It is the end of the episode o'clock. So stay tuned next episode where I show you guys how to use layers, colors, line types, and line weights to make your lot plan look something like this. Anyways, thank you guys for coming along another AutoCAD adventure. I will see you on our next quest. Flying peace!